Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is episode 195 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder at Whistlekick Martial Arts Sparring Gear and Apparel. I think I just threw some extra words in there. And today, we're going to do something a little bit different because I'm, well, I'm going to explain why in just a moment. If this is your first time tuning into the show, I want to welcome you, but let you know that today is going to be very different than what we typically do. So if you listen in and you're thinking, I don't know if this is the show for me, please check out one of our other 194 episodes before you pass judgment. We put a lot of work into those, and I'm going to be really honest, this episode is not going to have a whole lot of work into it. Why? Because it is important to me that we stay consistent, that I give you my phone going off, and I'm going to mute that right now. This is going to be a one-take sort of show. What does that mean? That means that I'm not going to be re-saying anything, redoing anything. It is going to be completely raw, behind the scenes, and that's why it has the title, Jeremy Unplugged. So here's what's going on, and yes, we are going to get into some martial arts stuff. I'm going to rant for a little bit. I'm going to give you something that, honestly, I have done very little of on this show, and that is tell you more about me, and I'm going to tell you why I am doing this kind of a show. I'm exhausted. I am on two and a quarter hours of sleep, but I want to make sure you guys get a show, okay? I value your time in listening, in making this part of your life, and I don't want to let you down. Only, what, once, twice? Have I missed a Thursday show? We've never missed a Monday show, and I don't want that to happen. Two and a half hours of sleep. Why? Because of Delta. Not Delta, the land feature. Not Delta, the sorority not the mathematical concept Delta or any other Delta, not the Greek letter Delta, but Delta Airlines. Um, Delta decided that delaying my flight coming back from Mobile, Alabama, which I was there for martial arts reasons, I will tell you why after, to get from Mobile to Atlanta to Burlington, Vermont, they decided that delaying my flight out of Mobile 16 times across two flights. I'm not, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I wrote them all down <laughs> 16 times. They thought that was a good idea. I didn't leave Mobile until 11.30. I got into Atlanta. I was standing in the lobby of the hotel at 2.30, and I had to get back to the airport for six or so. I, I don't, it, Two and a half hours is what I ended up with for sleep. So I'm kind of fried. I looked at a number of the topics that I keep in the list of, of stuff I want to talk about with, with you guys, and I didn't feel I was going to do any of them justice. So I thought, what can I do? What opportunity can I take? Well, I know that when I'm really tired, I don't have quite as much of a filter. Now, I'm not going to take the filter off completely. You won't hear me cursing in this episode, but I'll give you a little bit more of who I am. You'll be able to read maybe between the lines a bit on who I am and, and, and what drives this show and whistle kick. And to be honest, some of you may like it. Some of you may hate it. I want to know either way, social media at whistle kick or email. You can get to me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. So I, I, I made it home, obviously. Um, and if anybody was in the Detroit airport this morning and saw a frantic guy sprinting barefoot with his backpack flying around and uh, running down the moving sidewalks, looking like he was going to parkour vault over people in front of him. Uh, that was, well, maybe been more than one of us, but that, that was me. And if I uh, bumped you out of the way, I'm sorry. But you can blame Delta and their idea that a 15-minute a window to get from one concourse to the next was a good idea. I made it. I'm home. All right. So why was I at, why was I in Alabama? I was in Alabama for Bill Wallace, Superfoot stuff. And if you haven't listened to that episode, episode 14 with Grandmaster Bill, Superfoot Wallace, you might want to check that out. An absolutely wonderful episode. And honestly, a the introduction that has led to a relationship that has changed my martial arts path. I have met such amazing people through Bill Wallace, and I have had incredible training like this weekend. Once a year, 
the group will get together. The, the, it's primarily school owners, and then there are some others that are invited to come in, such as myself, and I'm incredibly lucky that that happens. And there was some testing, and, and, and I tested for my next rank. And uh, if you follow us on social media, you may have seen that uh, I passed my next rank, which was, was awesome. It was a really hard test. It was one of the harder tests I've had in the last few years. And that was a lot of fun, you know, great group. And, and just, I'm happy to be part of this organization. I'm, I'm happy to continue to learn. We were, um, we were down there in Alabama at Master John Graham's school, hoping to have him as well as a number of the other Superfoot Black Belts on because they're just an amazing collection of people. And I really enjoy getting to train the different things with each of them that they bring to the table. Because while the Superfoot kickboxing system is something that we have in common, we all have other things that make us the martial artists that we are. And, and we kind of share that knowledge and, and that's fantastic. So I just, you know, I was down there being a sponge, soaking it all up and, and learning some incredible stuff from some incredible martial artists. And now I'm tired. Now I'm exhausted because I spent far too long in the mobile airport, which I gotta be honest, if you haven't flown out of the South and I guess I'm going to make a generalization that, that may not be fair, but I'm used to flights getting delayed or canceled when I'm in New Jersey or New York or Philadelphia. And when that happens, people get frantic. They get crazy. And, and it seems like it's going to come to blows as people jockey to get in line just in case, you know, there's, there's a limited number of seats on a, another flight. Well, that didn't happen in Mobile. What did everybody do? They just kind of went, oh, that stinks. And uh, a number of us ended up at the airport bar. And uh, I, I may or may not have been one of those folks. But despite Delta's efforts, I had a really nice time. It was a great trip. And, and even coming back, other than the fact that I, I got in uh, a different day than I wanted to, and now I'm doing an episode that's very different, I had a very good time. What else can I tell you? What else? What else? What else can I tell you that's martial arts related? Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to pause here. I will chop this part out because I'm not going to leave you with with a minute pause as my distracted, tired brain wanders for where my train of thought went. The other thing that I wanted to talk about now I remember. Thanks for bearing with me. Was around conditioning. So what? What? How does that relate to? The story from this weekend with me. Well, first off, my sprinting to make my connection. Uh, when I say I was sprinting, I was sprinting. And uh, I don't know, must have been it's a good half mile plus that I was running. But, you know, I managed to make it um, because I spent time working on my conditioning. The testing was a, a very difficult and cardiovascular taxing test. One of my favorite quotes that I've heard, and I, I'm trying to remember where I where I got this, and, and I apologize for not being able to attribute it. Fit people are harder to kill, and as martial artists, you know, when we talk about the self defense portion of what we do, whether that's in essence or or you know a secondary tertiary concept for us as martial artists, I think that's pretty important to be harder to kill. I, I mean, that's kind of the essence of self defense, isn't it? If you don't have the conditioning that you want to, or that you feel you should. And I'm not going to set where that bar is. I think we all need to set it for ourselves. But if you know you're not at the standard you believe you should be, you should work on it. Because you're going to have more benefit addressing that with time out of your week than you are throwing punches and kicks. You can do both. It may not be the most efficient way to get there. But in a lot of martial arts classes, that is not really the focus in the way that we think about it. To go running or to do some general calisthenics, maybe that makes you fit in that way. And we've, I think we've talked about this on the show before, the, the idea that there are three metabolic pathways. And what does that mean? It means that we've probably all experienced the idea that, hey, you know, I can get through a martial arts class or several martial arts classes, and then I step in to an intensive sparring arrangement, whether that's, you know, stressful, so your heart rate's up, or, or it's a higher intensity sparring match, maybe you know, you're doing some kind of, of groundwork or, or whatever, and you get gassed out really fast. And that's because it's a different thing. There are people who can run seven minute miles, six minute miles for hours. They can't 
operate at a really high intensity for a short period of time, and vice versa. In martial arts, our level of intensity seems to fit one of two ways. It, it's the it's the the long, slow, you know, I'm doing basics all class at, at a high intensity sort of thing, or I'm doing forms all class, or sparring matches, which is a shorter but higher intensity duration. And it's something we got to work on in both ways. What else can I tell you? Episode 200 is happening May, no, June, because it's June now, June 26th, Monday. That was the M that was coming into my head. See, I told you, I'm tired. Things are not firing right in my brain. June 26th, 8 to 11 Eastern time. It looks like it's going to go up through YouTube Live. Have some final testing to do on that to make sure that that's the route that it's going to go. You will all be able to see where we're going to we're going to put all the details out on the website and on social media and everything. So just stay tuned and you'll know what's going on there. We will have the opportunity for you to, uh, I don't know about call in, but definitely write in. And if you have thoughts or comments or questions or things that you want incorporated in this three hour extravaganza of episode 200, go ahead, hit me up over social media at whistlekick. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. You know, what do you think should happen as part of that show? What do you want to know? What do you want to find out? Uh, you know, it's going to be the first live episode ever. It's going to be the what second, third ever video episode. I'm, I'm kind of pumped about it. So that's going to be cool. That's all I got, guys. I'm, I'm fading. Uh, I'm going to go take a nap because <laughs> I need one. I deserve it. I hope everybody has a great day, great week, great weekend. We'll be back on Monday with another awesome episode. I'm excited about this one. It's actually topical, the the timing of this individual. You'll know what I mean when you hear it. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.